Hello, this is Diane with Diane's Blue Hearts and Butterflies.com. And I fell in love with a card that I saw France Martin um, doing this technique called a peel away that she had done. And I was really in need of uh, some sympathy cards, and I thought these would be wonderful. This is using the paper uh, New Horizons that is in the January to June 2022 um, mini catalog that is expiring the end of June. This is uh, June. And so while supplies last, you can still get this paper. I really fell in love with it, so I grabbed some before it's going to go away. Um, her cards could use a background paper. It could use stamps and blending and any other way of doing these cards. Um, but I, using this paper, I thought a great way to use it would be either the stamps from the Get Grassy Grove or, um, or and from On the Horizon. Now, Grassy Grove and the Grove dies did carry over to the new 22-23 annual catalog, and so they are still available. However, the On the Horizon and the Horizon dies I think that's what they're called. They are expiring at the end of June also with the January to June 22 mini catalog. So if you don't want to miss out on the dies or the um, stamps or this great paper, you'll need to get an order in to order this. Um, this is still a bundle in that mini catalog. This one did carry over as a bundle into the annual catalog, so that's really good. So that one is still available. So I wanted to share these ideas with you. Now, in making mine a sympathy card, I did use some some stamps that I already had, but um, there was a celebration set from uh, last, I think it was last year, that had a great with sympathy. And then there was also, um, in a previous catalog, kindness and compassion that had some great sayings that could be used for uh, sympathy. So I did want to share how to do this technique with you. Um, basically it is having a torn edge that shows. Um, now on mine, I, I rolled it back and just kind of adhered it down with mini glue dots. You might want to cut some of that off so that it doesn't stand up so high. Or like the person in my local class, she went ahead and just tore hers all the way across and just used the top and bottom to create the look, the torn look. And it wasn't a peel away, it was just torn. So I'm going to share with you what all I used my, on my blog at Diane's Blue Hearts and Butterflies .com. There, the dimensions are over there, so uh, if you don't catch them, you can check that out um, over there. I do have links to um, all of the videos that I make for my um, local class things. There are still some people that aren't able to come to my local classes anymore, but they do watch my videos and are able to purchase the kits and do them or sometimes they just make it with the products they already have at home. So let me go ahead. This one is a regular base out of thick basic white cardstock. It's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter in landscape, and then that creates this. This piece, you find what which area of the paper you want, but it's going to be five and one eighth by three and seven eighths for the background. If you're going to just take and stamp some stamps and color them and blend and whatever you want, just make this piece a regular basic white uh, cardstock that you can put behind this part that we're going to tear. And this part is slightly larger at five and a quarter by four. So this is kind of like the regular layer and this one is slightly smaller than that so it fits behind. Now, <clears throat> for using, for the purposes of, of this card, I am going to stamp some images. I like having a really clear stamped image 
and I'm not real great with all of them all the time. So this one I'm going to go ahead and use the Stamp and Pierce matte. Even though it's a red rubber stamp and already has the foam cushion, I just want to make sure that I get a good clear dark stamp. So the other thing is when you're using, this one is the Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I just want to get a good amount on there but I don't want to get it all the way um, around the edges so you don't have to press in you just basically kind of tap across the front you're going to want to make sure that the raised image is what has the ink on it and then you'll put this wherever you want it I wanted it to kind of come look like it's coming out over some land across the lake or river or whatever it is and I just hold that on there to get a really good dark image I also from that one is from the on the horizons and this one is from the on the horizon it's the birds and I have to always kind of turn these around so I can make sure that I see which way they're flying and again just tap it across the top making sure to get that raised images and then I just want these to be kind of flying off. And you just hold it there and let the paper soak up that uh, ink. That's all you're wanting to really do. So let me set these aside. And put that over there. Now, on this part that we're going to tear, the thing about tearing is the part that tears up leaves behind the torn edge the, so that you can see inside the core. So when I tear the middle part up, it's going to leave the torn or where you can see the core, the torn core on this edge. So on this center piece, I'm wanting to tear up here and tear up toward me here and you want to make sure that you're tearing where your images are so I'm going to go down about maybe a fourth and then I could come up about a fourth of this piece just so that I can kind of see what it is and on this one I went ahead and used a little bit of the Wink Estella and put on there you don't have to um, just I wanted to give it a little bit of kind of shine on that one but so here's what I I am doing is gonna go down here I'm gonna hold this piece and then I'm gonna tear the middle part and you just it doesn't have to be an even tear it's make it kind of wonky and jagged as you want and you'll see as I'm tearing this part up it's leaving that torn core sh showing up on the top. Now, if you don't want that look on there, you could always tear it down, and then you'd end up with a solid edge right here. I just wanted to have kind of the torn look showing. And basically, it's just kind of ripping the paper and showing what's inside that the core of that paper. So you can see that uh, some cardstocks that you buy from other um, places, other stores and everything, they have kind of a white core even though the outside is dyed a different color or is uh, in a different color. But the cardstocks from Stampin' Up, the core and the outside are all dyed to match. So it's the same no matter what. Now, if you want to peel this back, one thing you might want to do to kind of break down those fibers is use your thumb and your bone folder to kind of create a curve. And I think on this one, I'm going to try to cut some of this off so that it's not so thick because it, it does create kind of a cut that part off and then I'll roll end up rolling this part and 
back to show that edge. And then I just used some glue dots. I'm just going to get it off with my snips here. And I just placed a glue dot back behind that and kind of glued that down. And I did that in a couple of places. And then I kind of flattened mine a little bit because if it's going to go in an envelope, it needs to not have quite so much. But it makes it look like it's kind of peeled away is basically what we're going for. So now that I've got those stamped on, Oh, and another thing you may want to do before you do this, and I did it again, is stamp your sentiment on the front part. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull these up. My glue dots are there. And then I'll just take those glue dots off. I'll do those again. This is how I learn. Sometimes I don't learn so quickly, but I am going to use the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink again. Oh, and I do need my Stamp and Pierce mat because this particular stamp is a uh, photopolymer. So it needs a little bit of cushion. So I'm going to fold that back out of my way. And I'm going to Stamp my sympathy on the front. Pull that straight up. Put that off to the side. And then I get to roll it again. <laughs> and get some more of the glue dots. Blue dot. There we go. And now I can use regular adhesive. I can use the Tombow white craft glue, whatever I want. And again, if you're using the Seal Plus, be careful because once you've broken down those uh, fibers of the paper, um, it might grab that and tear it, just to, just a warning. And then you're going to want to make sure that you have adhesive kind of up to this torn line as well, because you don't want them to peel up and see that. So set that off to the side, now that I've got glue on it, adhere this designer series paper or the paper that you've stamped on or created a scene. It could just be a row of flowers. Um, I could envision a row of birthday candles. I could, you know, all kinds of things in the background. Get this with kind of a, an even border. And then you're going to take this and make sure that you get an even border so that you're not showing that in the background. I need to bring it over a little. And there we go. So it kind of creates this little peel away of looking background. And then this other stamp, I'm going to stamp it. On the inside, I find that I just don't ever have enough sympathy cards on hand at one time. So I've been creating some, and there we go. And it's basically stamps, ink, and paper, and just using a cool technique, and you get a really pretty card. And again, if you wanted to, you could add some of that Week of Stella glitter brush here. Um, or you can just keep it kind of somber like it is. 
So whichever way that you like to have that, that's um, great. I appreciate you watching my video and I hope that you'll check out the blog where I have links to other videos about other cards that I made. And um, if you don't have a demonstrator, please, uh, I invite you to shop with me. You can contact me and I can get you a catalog. Also, um, if you like my YouTube channel, it helps it to grow. If you share it with others that might enjoy the same things. Um, and also, if you'll subscribe and click the bell icon, you'll be notified when I upload another video. So I appreciate you taking your time to share this with me and um, sharing what I love to share with other people. Thank you very much.